On September 11, 2001, nearly 3,000 innocent Americans were intentionally murdered. Over 1,000 soldiers have died and thousands more have been maimed or wounded. We dedicate this video to their memory and to the capture, trial, and punishment of those responsible. Please join us in a prayer or moment of silence in tribute to them. In its final report, the 9-11 Commission ignored the following significant facts and questions that conflict with that report's conclusions. Why did a third skyscraper at the World Trade Center that was not hit inexplicably collapse? Building 7 at the World Trade Center was never hit by an airplane and had no significant fire. It was 47 stories high. It was constructed of steel. Yet at 5.30 p.m. it fell perfectly straight down into a small pile of rubble, just like a controlled demolition. Why did the Federal Emergency Management Agency lament that the specifics of the fires in World Trade Center 7 and how they caused the building to collapse remain unknown? Larry Silverstein, the leaseholder of Building 7 who collected insurance of $7 billion, is on tape saying he ordered the New York Fire Department to pull it, to destroy the building with explosives. In October of 2001, Scientific American told us that they just don't build them as tough as the World Trade Center. Considering that Meridian Plaza in Philadelphia burned fiercely for 19 hours yet never collapsed, how could the South Tower at the World Trade Center fall after burning less than one hour? How could the North Tower fall after burning only for two? How could the jet fuel have caused the collapse when the Federal Emergency Management and other government agencies have stated that most of the jet fuel was gone in the initial fireball? Moreover, how could the fires have caused the collapse at all since recent fire tests by Cardington found that a steel building survived fires and experiments with extreme temperatures beyond the range possible with jet fuel. Since the black smoke coming from the buildings means that the fire was oxygen starved and could not have reached its maximum temperature of 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, and steel melts at a much higher temperature of 2500 degrees Fahrenheit, nearly 700 degrees hotter than the maximum temperature of the fire, how could cleanup crews have found melted steel in the basements? How could, days later, NASA satellite images show hot spots in the buildings that still exceeded the maximum temperatures possible? Explosives like C4, however, create temperatures of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which easily melt steel. Why did Fire Engineering Magazine tell us that no steel building has ever been destroyed by fire? that the World Trade Center investigation was a half-baked farce. Why was all of the important evidence illegally destroyed, some before the investigation began? Why was $40 million spent to investigate Clinton's sex life while only $600,000 was spent on investigating the World Trade Center fires and subsequent collapse? Why did the entire 9-11 Commission spend only $15 million while expenditures on Clinton's lies exceeded $65 million. How could the airliner's impact have caused the collapse when wind gusts from storms had at times been greater than the impact of the airliners? Neither tower was bent, nor did they creak or groan at any time. Firefighters said they seemed sound and reported that there were no fires they couldn't control. How could the building collapse at the maximum speed of gravity? Each floor hit should have slowed the fall, just as if you drop a steel ball from the roof it would fall faster without resistance. This couldn't have happened without explosives placed inside the structure. How could the concrete encased in a steel frame pan with two layers of carpet over it, riveted inside columns of steel beams, welded together in a network with steel bands be pulverized? How could steel beams and clouds of finely pulverized concrete come shooting out of the buildings at hundreds of miles an hour, traveling all the way to New Jersey? This is only possible with explosives. The buildings fell rapidly, according to the 9-11 Commission, because the bolts, rivets, and steel framework were weakened by the fire. If so, 
then how could the concrete be pulverized and ejected at high speed since the force to do that is greater than the force needed to shear the weakened steel, bolts, and rivets? How could the twin towers fall straight down when the damage and resulting fires were only to one corner, two sides? Only the tops of the twin towers should have fallen, and they should have fallen over, not straight down. In fact, the top of one tower did fall over onto building four, so there was no building weight to crush the floors below. So what caused the collapse of those floors? How could a hijacker find and hit the Pentagon whose flight instructor said, I'm still to this day amazed that he could have flown into the Pentagon. He could not fly at all. How could a pilot this bad have the flight controllers comment, The steep turn was so smooth, it's clear there was no fight for control going on. The complex maneuver suggests the hijackers had better flying skills than many investigators first believed. Why did NORAD fail to stop the attackers four times on September 11, 2001? Three times after they knew the planes were hijacked and intent on mass murder. How could this happen when NORAD had successfully intercepted off-course and suspected hijackings 67 times during the year prior to 9-11, according to the Associated Press, on August 13, 2002. Why did Condoleezza Rice lie that the U.S. had no idea that terrorists would use hijacked airliners when Richard Cheney was commanding war games on 9-11, chasing phantom hijacked aircraft? Why were our Air Force planes diverted from intercepting the real hijacked airplanes? Isn't it too much of a coincidence that the four hijacked aircraft had only 20% of their seats filled, while all other transcontinental flights that day had 70 to 90% of their seats occupied? Why did the New York Times not publish the results of a Zogby poll which showed that 66% of New Yorkers want the 9-11 investigation reopened? This poll also found that 49% thought that VIPs and the government knew ahead of time and let it happen. Thus, the final report does or will not answer many important questions and has many inaccuracies. Senator Mark Dayton of Minnesota officially complained. And their commission testimony 20 months later covered up those truths. They lied to the American people, they lied to Congress, and they lied to your 9-11 commission. Senator Dayton gave a few examples of the lies that NORAD told the official inquiry. NORAD issued an official chronology which stated that the FAA notified NORAD of the second hijacking at 8.43. Wrong. FAA notified NORAD of the third hijacking at 9.24. According to your report, wrong. FAA notified NORAD of the fourth hijacking at an unspecified time and that prior to the crash in Pennsylvania, Langley F-16 combat air patrol planes were in place remaining in place to protect Washington, D.C. All untrue. He pointed out that the Commission's report actually admits that NORAD lied, in effect, committing perjury. And in that testimony before you, NORAD officials stated also that at 924 they received notice of the hijacking of the third plane, American Flight 77, also untrue according to your report. But what I find much more shocking and alarming were the repeated and catastrophic failures of the leaders in charge and the other people responsible to do their jobs, to follow established procedures, to follow direct orders from civilian and military commanders. And then they failed to tell us the truth later. Just one example of their extreme incompetence is that NORAD sent our fighter jets in the wrong direction. NORAD mission commander ordered his only three other planes on alert in Virginia to scramble and fly north to Baltimore. Minutes later, when he was told that a plane was approaching Washington, he learned that the planes were flying east over the Atlantic Ocean, away from Baltimore and Washington. So that when the third plane struck the Pentagon, NORAD's fighters were 150 miles away, farther than they were before they took off. This is just unbelievable negligence. Some people dismiss these numerous acts of blatant incompetence while our nation was under attack as innocent mistakes. However, Senator Dayton pointed out that if we allow government officials to lie to us, and if we allow them to falsify documents, 
and if we allow them to be unbelievably, grossly negligent, it doesn't matter how many laws we pass or how much money we spend on commissions or investigations. And we can set up all of the oversight possible at great additional cost to the American taxpayers, and it won't be worth an Enron pension if the people responsible lie to us. If they take the records and doctor them into falsehoods, and if they get away with it. Senator Dayton is just one of the many skeptics complaining about the incompetence, the doctored reports, the lies, the cover-up. There are millions of people around the world who are disappointed with this dismal failure of the American government to protect us. Theodore Roosevelt warned us. To announce that there must be no criticism of the president, or that we are to stand by the president right or wrong, is not only unpatriotic and servile, it is morally treasonable to the American public. Let's begin by looking at the news reports about the September 11th attack. Some events on September 11th were either ignored altogether or mentioned only briefly. As we mentioned before, Building 7 was a 47-story skyscraper with a hard steel frame. It was almost half the height of the towers. This building collapsed at 5.30 p.m. in the evening. However, this news report was never repeated. Most people still do not even know this building existed, let alone that it collapsed. Military officials told reporters that they did not have any video of the airplane crashing into the Pentagon. News reports show only the fires and rubble from the crash, rather than the airplane as it crashes. News reports tell us that the FBI confiscated security camera tapes from the gas station and hotel across the street and other nearby buildings that show the airplane flying toward the Pentagon. Within a few days, the FBI released the names and photos of the alleged 19 hijackers. Yet, news reports point out that some of these alleged hijackers are still alive and well in Saudi Arabia, although some reports disagree on which hijackers are still alive. The FBI has not removed the mistakes from their list. We never saw Flight 77 crash into the Pentagon because military officials said there were no photos or video of that event. The early drawings turned out to be incorrect, such as this one from U.S. News and World Report in which the airplane is diving toward the helicopter pad. As a result, many people still incorrectly believe that the plane caused the roof to collapse when it was really just the fire. This computer simulation follows the official theory that Flight 77 flew a few inches above the grass and crashed into the ground floor. The pilot in a 757 is about 55 feet above and forward of the engines. It would take Superman skills to fly so close to the ground at 400 miles per hour. Just imagine trying to drive your car 400 miles per hour between the two irregular concrete walls inches from the sides. Moreover, since the pilot could only see one engine, he would not even be able to see how close the passenger side is to the wall and obstructions. Originally, the FBI claimed the terrorist who flew this plane was an experienced pilot for a Saudi Arabian airline, but they switched their claim to an inexperienced pilot after discovering he was still alive in Saudi Arabia. Regardless of whether it was an expert pilot or not, experienced pilots deny anybody could fly such a huge plane so low without crashing. How could anyone fly a 60-ton, 125-foot wide, 44-foot tall plane through this obstacle course. Moreover, only military aircraft are allowed in the prohibited area surrounding our nation's military command and control center, or legislature and the Supreme Court. How could our entire mega-billion-dollar military, with the ultimate in satellite, radar, radio equipment, and air...